Let's try this one more time, man. So we're going to go live, and um, we had some technical difficulties with my man, Matt Johnson. But other than that, we'll get him an iPhone and send it to him so that way he can keep up with us over here. But anyway, um, today, with or without Mr. Matt Johnson, I'm going to go live, and we're going to talk about some things that I've been working on for Limitless and what this means. And to be honest, like Matt wanted to... Um, interview me about Limitless and what Limitless is and what it's what his experience has been with me because he wants to he's been going to doing interviews with multiple people who are coaches he did one with somebody um a fitness coach he did one with somebody that was a business coach and I myself my friends oh my god I know it works holy hell oh my god I know <laughs> So we have Matt M.F. Johnson in the house. What's up, What's up brother? How you doing, man? <laughs> What's going on, man? Man, trying to get this dude with the Android on my on my live stream. It's tough. <laughs> I, I'm I'm sure it was uh, on the Apple and not not on the Android end. Yeah, yeah. I'm live. I, I don't I'm... know about you, but I'm live, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, do me a favor since we're live now. We, we got this. We got this circus on the road. Do me a favor and find that little dude down there. Hit the invite button. Let's share this out. Let's get some people in here. Anyway, um, Matt. So what um what do you what do you got planned for today? What are you thinking about, man? Because I know you've been doing some interviews and things like that with other people. Who have you interviewed so far? Uh, so far, I have interviewed. I've interviewed uh, a few different coaches. That's what this month was all about, was packing this month uh, full of coaches. So I've intervie interviewed Anna Marie, who's a life coach, uh, Brian Sherman, that's a leadership coach, Aaron Duran, who is a fitness coach, uh -huh. and nothing would be complete without having some type of mindset coach. So who better – the the one, the only, <laughs> JC Limitless. That's what's up, man. Hey, I appreciate it. I don't I don't normally do these interviews, man. I'm not a big fan of them, but um, I I don't know, man. I I, I figured this guy he had a nice smile, so I figured I'd give it a shot and see what happens. <laughs> how could you say How could you say no to this, man? Come on now, dude. Where's Where's your hat at, bro? It's uh, it's in it's in the house. Man, here I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up the Christmas well, spirit since it, you ain't, man. Let me, let me help it, you out. It don't a fit. Bit. It don't fit in the car, man. It don't fit in the car. <laughs> it don't fit in the car, bro. Like we're gonna we're gonna make this yeah. a limitless Christmas. What'd my my uh, Christmas my Christmas tree don't don't fit in, don't fit in the Tahoe. It don't fit in the Tahoe. <laughs> you gonna wear your tree yeah, on your it, head, bro? It, it's it's too tall, man. But yeah, the the goal of this month. Wrapping up the end of this year, I wanted to gain some momentum for everybody going, finishing out this year, going into next year, and wanted to round it out with with those those four style coaches, uh, so everybody can take something something different. And you you of all people know what you've been working on, what's been what's been going on, and what you've been pushing for. So I really wanted to sit down with you and uh see what what you've done um uh, since our since our last interview September yeah I think it was September and finish finish this year out and then help everybody who's watching who shares this watching the replay to carry that momentum into 2018 because you can't start on January 1 because then you're already behind. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, um what is what's your goal for the for this interview, the end the end result, man? Like what do you what what's your message you want to get to everybody? I mean not not, message, not, hey, not about me. I'm talking about just your your message. Like what is it that that made you want to do this uh interview with all the coaches, not just me. I mean everybody. Like what was it? Right. Uh, the biggest thing is the advantages of having a coach in your corner, having somebody that's got your back and you can watch, you can watch all the videos, you can read all the books you want, but if you don't have that motivation to do it on your own, the benefits of having a coach, that, that accountability, the get your shit together and uh, 
forcing that discipline. I mean, you've, you've got to have it because not everybody can just read a book and be like, oh, I read this book, so now I know what to do. Absolutely, man. So um, why, don't we just, why don't we just start with you firing away at, with the questions, and we'll, uh, we'll see what you got because uh, this should be interesting. Fire away. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Absolutely. I wanted to start right off the bat with your definition of self-improvement. Get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, it, it. It's short. It's sweet. Yeah, no, I mean, like, like my definition of self-improvement is, um, you know, it varies for everybody. And you know when you're honest with yourself, what your weaknesses are, man. So like, and you know what your strengths are and you know what you need to stop doing and what you need to do more of, you know, like to make your life better. And I just, I mean, the, the, my definition of self self-improvement is um, just be real with yourself and do what the hell you're supposed to be doing, man, to get where you want to go. You know what I mean? That that's, I mean, cause you could be improving for a billion things. There's so many variations. It just depends on what your goals are. Absolutely. And I know what a difference having a coach uh, in my life ha has done. So what's a difference that you see having a coach, whether it's life coach, leadership coach, uh, a, a mentor, self-improvement coach, than just reading something or listening to, I don't know, like uh, Grant Cardone, Tim Robbins, one of their videos and be like, okay, got it. I can maybe do something now. Yeah. So, um, I mean, nothing, nothing beats like real life experience. You know what I mean? And like, you can perceive things and understand things only to your level of that, that understanding, you know? So if, if I was to make a video course and just give you the course and be like, good luck, bro. Like, I, I mean, are you going to do the work? Are you going to pay attention to it? Like, how are you going to, how are you going to understand it? All of that comes into play. So like anybody can just dump you with, with a course and that's it and tell you good luck, man. You know, I mean, depending on how bad you want it and how well you understand the information, that's going to determine what you're going to get out of that. But there's nothing that, that beats real life experience, you know, and when you've got a real coach, that ask you specific questions about you, where you are in your life, not just, not just like your business, but you as a person, like what is it that you are having a hard time with? And we got to fix that. Maybe it's, maybe it's being honest with yourself. Maybe it's, you can't even get your ass out of bed in the morning. Like all these little things, you know, like people, people look at things sometimes, I think um, from a grand perspective and, and they don't look at the, the, the micro managing of their day. So if you did, if, if you say you had 50 tasks today and 40 of them, you did like crap. Like at the end of the day, you're going to have some crappy results. You know what I mean? And having somebody there to hold you accountable, like what were your goals? Did you get them done? What, what did you do for the last hour? Like, where did you go? And, you know, like having somebody there with you to walk you through your goals and, and to be there for you as a coach like that is what's going to be the, the difference between failure and, and success. And and you hit hit on uh, something I want to go into real quick of uh, about being being real with yourself and finding finding the value in yourself and uh, taking the the dreams or the resolutions and creating turning those into goals. How how do people start or how do you as a coach implement that with with somebody? Uh, I mean, I know with with me it was about not making excuses anymore and uh, not being a bitch. Uh, but so how, how does that work with, with somebody, you know, asking themselves a hard question, being honest with themselves? So I'm like, like everybody's different. So you have to really, if you're, if you're a good coach, if you're a real coach, you're going to ask those questions. You're going to find out what, what is hard for them and what are they struggling with? And, you're going to know how hard to push them and you're going to know when to cut yourself off from them. Cause like a coach isn't there to like do the work for you. A coach is there to show you what you need to do and give you the task and then let you do it. You know, like there's tons of things like, um, like for instance, let's, you, let, let me flip the script since I don't play by the rules very much. What are some of the things that I had you do, bro? <clears throat> 
Uh, a lot of the, the biggest things was not, not only getting, getting up because I, I get up early. Uh, I have for years. That's, that's not a problem, but getting back to, to working out, it was writing my goals down daily. It was the daily affirmations that you had me, had me writing. And the biggest one, and I know you're going to, you're going to love this was the awareness log that we had to keep. Okay. That, because I was, I was busy every day, every single day, bell to bell. And then I started writing the time out in that awareness log. And I was like, man, I am pissing away a lot of time, like half my day. Tell, tell I don't them, even know hey, where it goes. Everybody, tell, I mean, just tell everybody what that is. Like, what is the awareness log? Like, what is that? Uh, it's, Awesome and terrible at the same time, uh, <laughs> because at the top of every hour, we started at 5 a.m. till we went live at 9 p.m. Top of every hour, we had to write what we did during that hour. And, you know, the, the first three hours of my day were easy. It was get up, work out, you know, the whole, you know, military. So shit, shower, shave. Easy. Got to work, got got a little harder and to write where the last hour was. I was like, I don't really want to write this. <laughs> and, and what and but what did you get out of that though? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, what'd you get out of it? Uh, the biggest thing I got out of it is how much time I was wasting, either being on my phone, uh, getting sidetracked with social media or uh, a game or not. Well, or doing whatever I possibly could to not make my follow-up calls that I should be doing, uh, writing the, the letters, uh, doing, doing posts, doing videos that I should be doing that's going to maximize my, my exposure. Absolutely. So, so basically, guys, like, um, you know, like everything I, I'm here to do is, as far as a coach um, is about mindset. And that is a very big and broad spectrum. So one little thing that I had all of these guys do in the boot camp was every hour on the hour for about, what was it, about two weeks? I had everybody writing two weeks down. Or three weeks. I had everybody writing down from 5 a.m. to 9 o'clock at night every hour what they did the last hour. What did you do the last hour? What did you do the last hour? And one, they found, that, you know, just overthinking and daydreaming and lo losing time. And two, they found themselves being very busy, but not productive. So they would be doing like if they had to be making calls at this certain time, they found themselves maybe recording video or maybe trying to post something on social media, something to do with their goals. But it, it, was, it didn't have anything to do with their immediate goals, what they're trying to work on today. So being real with yourself and finding those things that you're actually not spending quality time on, you're just remaining busy well and and rationalizing in your mind well this has to do with my business so i'm being productive and removing that stuff and getting down to the nitty-gritty of like how can i squeeze time how can i create time how can i get the most out of my time and just that one little thing right there i've seen a major shift in, in everybody in the boot camp from their actual pro productivity levels <clears throat> yeah that that was huge and uh so with everything that you have going on with, with Limitless and as many people as you want to reach, why a boot camp? Why, why start with five people Okay, so, ten people? Okay, so um, I started out with a boot camp because, you know, like for me to be able to, and, and I mean, this, this goes for everybody. Like you should really take notes on what I'm about to say because my end result goal, it's, it's been since I started Limitless, is I want to reach hundreds of millions of people. My brand is, is not there yet. It's, it's two years old. I'm definitely, I mean, new to the game so much with, with social media. Everything you see here is something that I've learned along the way. I've not really had any help with it. And it's, and it's hard. And I've been fighting this battle of trying to get to thousands of people every day. How can I reach thousands of people? But the thing about it was is I came to the realization is that um, the more value, the more people, the more the, the higher the level of value that I can bring to a group of individuals and bring them close to me and get them in, a, in, in their space and be successful, 
that is going to do way more than me blatantly trying to like reach out and, 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 and throw, you know, like 20 rocks in the water and see what I can hit. You know, it's, it's in my mind, it was, look, man, like we got to pull this together. We're going to start with an inner circle and we're going to work our way out. So for me, knowing that I opened the door for 10 people to come to the boot camp, this was not like, if you got the money, you can sign up boot camp. This was like, I interviewed all you guys. I made sure that you were qualified to be there. I wasn't looking for victim mentalities. I wasn't looking for, you know, whiners and people that, that have these problems. I was looking for people that have really been fighting their ass off for the last year, two, three, four years, five years, and been stuck. And that's where I step in and I push you over that edge. There's a hundred different things that I'm sure that all of everybody in the boot camp can agree with that I've been I've really been pushing the the envelope with with fears that they have within themselves. Like I, I'm the guy that's running up behind you and just shoving you off the cliff and you need to figure out how to build that parachute on the way down. <laughs> I 100, 100% agree with that. Uh, and the first, first two weeks was, was intense with, uh, with the awareness logs, <clears throat> uh, the, the daily goal writings on top of the daily affirmations. So what, why, why have us write something down? Why, why the daily affirmations of a hundred times in the morning, a hundred times at night until it became 300. Was it 300 in the 300 total or three, three and three, <laughs> three and three. I don't even three and three. Yeah. And I mean, I went, I went through a couple notebooks pretty, pretty quick. Okay. So why? <laughs> okay. So along with the awareness thing, like I was just talking about, about how I had everybody writing down every hour on the hour, what they're doing, that was just to do with their time. Um, I really broke awareness down in a major way because, you know, a lot of gurus, coaches, people like videos you watch, like people are going to be like, you need to be aware of yourself. And then they, they leave it at that. And then you're like, okay, I need to be aware of myself, but they don't explain what that means. Like, you need to be aware of your time. You need to be aware of your friends, your family. Who's a naysayer? What do your texts look like? What does your social media look like? What are you being tagged in on social media? What does your news feed look like? What does your emails look like? Like, what does your phone calls look like during your day? Like, there's so much stuff that surrounds you as an individual that influences you. And it was my job to bring your awareness up to that so you could see what that was. And part of that wasn't just going to be like, Hey guys, pay attention to your phones for the day. I needed to get your attention. I needed I needed you to understand that this was real, and I need I need your attention. So part of the program was having everybody write down in the beginning, a hundred times in the morning and a hundred times at night. I am aware of my my thoughts and my actions, and by writing it down a hundred times in the morning and a hundred times at night, it really weighs on you in in, in a lot of different ways. So. One, you've got this ridiculous task and you're an adult and you're like, why do I need to do this? And two, the big major part is like, you know, if you've ever, if you ever watched The Simpsons and you see Bart Simpson writing on the chalkboard, I will not throw spitballs or whatever. I, I, they did that to us in school back in the day. And, you know, like when you write stuff down like that, so write that on a chalkboard 50 times, erase it and write it another 50 times. They're doing that as to, to teach you a lesson. So you don't forget the lesson because when you're writing it down, you're physically writing it down. You're mentally thinking about what you're writing down and you're reading what you're writing down at the same time. There's a psychological um, lesson there for you where you begin to retain that information that you're being taught because in school they will say, Hey, I'm going to give you this book right here and I want you to read this book. And then at the end of the week, I want you to tell me what was in this book. And then three weeks later, nobody ever talks about this book ever again. You'll never, ever hear about this book again. And what yep. they're teaching you is to, to retain information just long enough to put it on a piece of paper. And then that information is lost in time. And the things that I'm teaching are the foundational pieces of what makes you successful. Success is not some crazy ass thing that only like, you know, special sperm counts get a hold of, and like th those guys are going to be, you know, special. Or some magical fairy comes in and puts success dust on your freaking head. 
it's it comes down to your mindset it comes down to your determination your discipline your awareness <coughs> and what it is that you are determined to go get by any means necessary and by having everybody be aware of their time their their environment the people around them all this stuff and then write down i'm aware of my my thoughts and my actions and then write down what your goals are for the day tied along with the to-do list which when you get done with the to-do list, it should equal what your goals are on paper. <laughs> yeah, like you, you've got no way out. Like the, the problem is, is a lot of people have way too much time on their hands. That's how they get caught overthinking and procrastinating and sitting in fear and all this stuff. If I can keep your mind active, busy, really productive for 80% of your day, you can't fail. You have no, there's no, there's no, room for you to overthink or sit down or take a break or whine and cry about anything. All you have is what's in front of you and get it done. And it, I, it starts with, with awareness, hundred percent from awareness. Does discipline come next, come next or discipline first? So when, when the awareness pops in, it becomes like a, it becomes like a dance because you're gonna be you're gonna be dancing with both of them, you know. So like you've got to be disciplined <laughs> and you've got to have a desire to want to do what what's being asked. But there's a there's a problem with being disciplined. Like when you hear the word discipline, most people cringe. And I figured out a way to get over that little hump. So with with the boot camp that I have, the boot camp was. X amount of dollars to get signed up for six months. That money is non-refundable. This boot camp has three, a three strike rule. So if you get three strikes, you're out of the program and I keep your money. So now you have a little incentive to go sit down and write down a hundred times. I'm aware of my thoughts and my actions. Now you have incentive to wake up at five in the morning and go to gym. Now you have incentive to write your goals for the day, because if you don't do any of these things, that's just your morning rituals. That's a strike. And this is for six months. So if you really want to get somewhere, you need something held over your head. You know, like one time I asked people in the limitless mafia, my, my, my free Facebook group, um, if, if I gave you two free t-shirts, would you guys all write your goals down for 30 days straight? And I think about 30 people are like, yes, I'm, I'm, sign me up. I, I want the shirts. But the thing about it was, is like, where, where in, your, in your mind, where in our mindset did t-shirts become more valuable than what you're writing down on that piece of paper? So now we get into like the value system. And, and I mean, we can talk about that later, but um, it's, it's just about finding ways it's like an entrepreneur man like you know like if they if this if they if they destroyed our internet and made us all pay for it like i'm going into entrepreneurship but like i'm going to find a way around this i'm going to make this work whether it's with or without them so if you guys if i can't get people to be disciplined and do what they need to do to be successful by the normal rules we're just going to make up some new ones i'm going to make sure you're going to get there and i i love that agree with that 100% uh, how, how do you start that training? I mean, with, with instilling, you know, instilling the, holding the carrot over somebody, is it a switch that you just, you just flip? How do you ease somebody into, into that and not just give them that shove before they can build the parachute on the way down? So this is where the, this is where the, the individual contact and, knowing your client, knowing where they're from, what type of lifestyle they live, what their goals are, where their mindset is, um, how they deal with their emotions, how they interact with other people, what their fears are. This is collectively collected in. So during the process of like everybody writing down their awareness, this also gets to show me what everybody's fears are and how they react to authority and like everything that's needed for me to collect information. See, there's a, there's a method to the madness here. So while you're doing the, <laughs> the uh, awareness part of this program, I'm able to collect your information. I'm able to see what your fears are. And are you uh, emotionally intelligent? Are you really determined to do this? Are you fighting back? And for instance, so Justin Sokol, which is one of the guys that was in the boot camp. Um, he made it about four weeks. 
and he got tossed because he just rebelled. He rebelled. He rebelled. Like, um, and to be honest, like it, it comes from being put in, and, and, and this could be different for anybody, but like, like for him, it was, you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm not waking up at this time. I'm going to do this. That doesn't work for me. And it was a fixed mindset. And that fixed mindset put him in a position where he couldn't make it through the program. And everybody knows, like I even got a few people saying, hey, dude, don't be showing favoritism here. But I got a lot of love for that dude, man. Like he's, he really is working his ass off. But there's little different things that each of us need to do to change to get where we need to go. And he just didn't want to do it. So it came to a point where we really butted heads. And I just had to let him go, you know, like I gave him more than I, I would say more than street three strikes to get it together. So um, hopefully that answered your question, but it's, it's it, it does. Absolutely. And with with that, and I know that this is something I still struggle with, even after some of the some of the calls that you and I have failure, how walk me walk me through how you would teach somebody to embrace that like me, it's you have me have a goal of minimum of 200 business cards per week handed out. And I've already got asked to leave three businesses just this week alone, <laughs> handing, handing out cards. Uh, you're not, you're not doing it. Enough. So you're not, you should, there should be like 12, but we'll let it, we'll let it slide. <laughs> so, so how do you find that, that failure for, for each person? Is it by getting to know them and uh, screening them for the boot camp? Yeah, yeah. So like it's it's during the screening that I learned some of it, but the majority of it, because people will wear masks, man. They're like we live in a, a world of freaking masks. And when everybody's nodding in the green, everybody's like, Yeah, yeah, success. <laughs> Win it. <laughs> Woo! They're getting crazy. But then when it's when it's time to show up, when it's time to perform, when it's time to do the damn thing, you'll you'll figure out really quickly like who's really in the game and who's really willing to do whatever it takes by any means necessary to get the job done. And then the moment I see fear, I'm coming like a, like a bull and I'm about to ram you off the edge <laughs> of the cliff. Like it's time to go because the only way that you're going to get over your fears is to face them. If you don't, if you don't face your fears, your fears will control you. Your environment will control you. If you're standing in a room and you're supposed to talk to everybody there and sell everybody that's in front of you, say there's 10 people there and you're scared to talk to nine of them, I don't think you're going to be selling much today, buddy. So my job is, is to put my hand around your neck and walk over to door number one and say, this is the door. You knock right here, and you're going to get it done. And if you don't, you're going to get a strike. And now you've got this enormous amount of money hanging over your head if you don't do it. So now you have a little incentive to get the job done. But with fear, I mean failure, um, that failure is 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 exactly the same as success. There there is no difference. Like it's it's a piece of the puzzle. And the thing about it is, and this is probably what I'm going to do my live stream about tonight, is that um, there's no good and bad. Like in your mind, you see something and oh, this is bad. And then you start here comes all these crazy thoughts and ideas and like outcomes and crap that just mounds in your head. And you're just sitting there with sweaty palms and like scared. Look at your phone. Is JC going to hit me up? Like you're freaking out right now. <laughs> and it's for no reason because good and bad doesn't exist. What, what exists is an event. There's an event happening and whether you think it's good or think it's bad, it's happening either way. So for you to think that it's bad and to sit in fear and think this is a failure you're sadly mistaken because once you come back to your senses, now you're right back to the drawing board where you left off before you got scared and full of failure. So like I, I advise for everybody to go fail and fail and fail because, you know, like my, my greatest failures, my smallest, I'll tell you this, my smallest failures is bigger than a lot of people's greatest achievements. And, and, I, and that makes a big world of a difference in your mind and keeping your anxiety and your stress down because, hey, look, man, like, um, you know, maybe something horrific happened. Whether, whether you want to accept it or not, that's up to you. But it still happened. And how you decide to act on it, because you shouldn't react to anything. But how you decide to act on it, that's, that's totally up to you. If you want to lose your mind and feel sad and be down and lose time and put your head between your knees and get into the victim mentality, let me know when you're all done over there. Wipe that, mop that shit up. 
and then uh, we're gonna we're gonna get back on track. So I highly I highly advise for people to just go get ready, go fail, man, because it, it's coming sooner or later. The more you fail, the farther you're gonna get, or the closer you're gonna get to your goal. Hundred percent agree, and that goes into what you and I talked about yesterday. Was the small-minded people will never accomplish large goals, and I mean that's that's huge. Is just getting getting your mind right and getting prepared so you're not you're not reacting. You're ready for anything. It's just whatever comes. So with with doing that and increasing the failure or the enchant the chance of failure, how do you create that beast within somebody and unleash it and just know that they're going to tear everything up in a good way? So <laughs> there's, there's a lot of different ways. My, my, I think the one, the most effective way is, is that I'm going to notice, I'm going to see whether or not you're performing or showing up or coming up with, with the results or even attempting it. And if I feel like you're not, then instead of doing our daily call, which we do a call every day in the boot camp, now you're going to call me every hour on the hour and I need to know what you got done. And I don't need you to tell me, I need you to show me, show it to me, show me what you did, where, it, where can you physically show me what you got done? And the thing about it is, is that along that journey of, of this, you know, like you were saying that small minded people, um, they don't understand what, what, you know, big thing people are doing. You know, it's kind of like, um, like I like, I look at it like this, like small minded people will never understand a global thing. Like if you're thinking globally, if you're thinking big, like that is a completely different thing. And the best way that I can describe how you can compare that or what that looks like is, take a five-year-old and take a 40-year-old and put them in a room and ask both their perspectives on, you know, the value of a, of a Lamborghini. You know what I mean? Because the, by, by the time you're 40, you've already taken in all these beliefs. You've learned all this stuff. You believe you can't afford it. You believe that this car is outrageous. I would never spend $400,000 on a car. And that little five-year-old kid hasn't been, tainted with life yet that five-year-old kid's like i don't care what it costs like can i drive it like they're they're already they're ahead of you you know what i mean so like that's the the difference in mindset but like if i were to mention that i would like to see in the next 10 years having um limitless the limitless institute as a non-profit organization in 20 different countries i mean people are like most people they're not gonna they're gonna look at me and be like sweet whatever dude and they're gonna walk away but in all seriousness, like I've got years and notepads and, and things of all of this being set up in my plan and how I'm going to get all this done. And it will be, but it's just, you can't tell people that, you know, like when I started my first business, people thought I was out of my rabbit ass mind. But when that money started coming in, things got a little bit different. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, right. it's tough, man. You know, it's tough. And, and you're going to sad, but true. You're going to have to weed those people out. Like, and it doesn't mean you got to say bye to them forever, but you got to sit down and be like, look, yo, like, this is what I'm doing. And if you don't support me, like, go sit in the corner because I got shit to do today. You know, like, you, you're, you're either with me or you're against me. And if you're against me, I'm just going to run you over or stay out of my way. That's awesome, man. I love that. Uh, and you mentioned calling every hour on the hour because you wanted to see and have, have somebody show you. Does that eliminate the excuses? Or does that reduce the amount of excuses that somebody com can come up with and tie back into the discipline? Yeah, so of just doing it. Yeah, so there comes a point where, um, depending on what that what that goal or project was, um, maybe maybe it was maybe it was. Hey, look, like you've been slacking on your sales. You had a goal of hitting a thousand dollars this week. You're at like hundred and fifty bucks, or you're at like seven hundred and fifty bucks. You're not there yet if I can see that I've pushed you and you didn't quite hit your goal, but I literally got to see, like, you can show me the messages. You can show me the text. You can show me the post. You can show me the ads that you put on Facebook. You can show me the stuff that you've been working all day. I'm, I'm not going to give you a strike. You know what I mean? But I am going to see the effort that you put in. And if you gave me an enormous effort, then we have an understanding. You know what I mean? It's, 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 
I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not out here to just give out strikes. I'm out here to look for the progress and the wins. That's <coughs> that's what's most important. And doing that is does pushing somebody too far exist? Uh, pushing them out of their comfort zone too far, or pushing them too far into <laughs> something that they're not ready for? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that is so. In in most people's minds, that is dangerous or scary or you shouldn't push them like that. But the reality of it is, is somebody's got to do it because you've got enough people telling you that, hey, everything's going to be okay. Like, just why can't you just be the way you are? Like, you're perfect the way you are. Like, can't you just settle? Why do you have to have it all? Like, why are you working so much? Um, you know, like, we got enough people saying stuff like that, but we don't have what we don't have is enough people actually pushing people to get to their potential, pushing people past what their limit is. You know what I mean? And And it is... Um, you need to use your judgment on it. You know, th there's there's a point where, all right, dude, I know I need to back down. Like this person's at that point, you know? So um, there's there's a lot of different techniques that I'll use. Um, if I give you a task and you're, and you're not performing or I see you shutting down, maybe I'll give you the silent treatment. I'm not gonna answer your coaching call today. I'm not gonna talk to you today. That that's my way of letting you know that I'm disappointed in what you're doing. Um, and that also gives my client time to sit and think about what they're actually doing. Rather than being in victim mode, I still have their attention, even though I didn't say anything to them. So now they're sitting there thinking about me, thinking about the, the goal at hand, and they're thinking about what they're supposed to be getting done. And maybe I did push them to that point, but it's something that's needed because what, it, what does that mean to be pushed to a point? That means your that's your limit, man. That's where you decided as a person that I'm only willing to go this far, and I'm going to show you and tell you that you're, that's not far enough, and I'm going to push you farther. So you push them towards the the fight or flight. Is that yeah. that what it is? Yeah, and we don't we don't we don't take, we don't take flight. We ain't birds. <laughs> <laughs> but you but you try to push them push them there so they realize that they're either going to fight for what they want in this life and their goals, or they're going to play the victim mentality for the rest of their life. And this ain't for them. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it's either you either going to do it or you're not, you know, and, and that can always change. Like everything's a moving target. Everything changes all the time. Whatever your goals are today, they can change tomorrow. But um, maybe, maybe you're fresh into personal development. Maybe you've been laying on a couch, getting fat, eating Cheetos, watching football games. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, but if that was you and you attempted personal development to develop yourself or to better yourself, it's going to be hard. Like this is harder than anything you'll ever learn. Any college course you can take, any sales course, marketing course, um, this is harder than anything because you're dealing with yourself and people are shying away from it. People are like, well, I'll avoid working on myself and let me take this sales training course. Believe me, guys, like you guys are gifted with the ability to do a lot of major things. And it's it's not it's not your lack of sales. It's not your lack of uh, marketing. It's not your lack of any of that. It's the lack of your belief in yourself. It's the lack of attention you give yourself. It's the lack of pushing yourself. It's the lack of manning up or womaning up and doing what you need to do when it gets hard instead of looking for the first out that you can find or the first person to blame or whatever that looks like. I mean, there's a lot of variations here, but dude, it's about you. And what are you going to do? I mean, do you, do you think that Elon Musk knew anything about flying to freaking Mars when he decided he's going to Mars? He believed he could. He, he, he didn't, hey, let's go do a walk through NASA today and like, let's see how they do it. Like that dude was <laughs> like, all right, who's got rockets? I got money. We're going to Mars. Like end the story. Who's with me? And, and that, was, that was the beginning of his journey. And if you look at it at that magnitude, there's nothing special about him. He's not some special sperm count or had somebody put magical fairy dust on his freaking head to be successful. He believes in himself. He's worked on himself. He knows himself, and he'll push himself and those around him. That's awesome. Uh, you mentioned being fresh into the, the personal development, personal training side of it. Uh, watching, watching football, eating, eating Cheetos. So how does that average person that is just brand new to this get in to change their mindset? Because, I mean, how do they do it without a coach? 
That's is, is there a way to do it without a coach? Yeah, because once is. it gets hard, aren't they going to back off and just retreat? Yeah, there, there, there definitely is. So there's, um, and they are going to back off. They are going to retreat. <laughs> um, so I'll speak for myself on this one. I didn't have a coach in the beginning, but what it took for me was something catastrophic in my life to get my attention and for me to change my perception on things you know like um we got a lot of cool things out here man like a lot of technology we have a lot of tv shows we've got a lot of you know tablets and 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 social media and websites and all this cool shit man like it's amazing what we can do like people did this you guys like it didn't fall out of the sky somewhere like people believed in themselves enough to do this and Going down that journey that I was on, it took something horrific in my life to get my attention to say, hey, you're not doing the right thing, dude. Like, this isn't working out. And when I started stripping away everything that was around me, like all the extra nonsense, all the going out to the clubs, all the blowing every dollar I had so I looked like I had money every week, going to bars and buying everybody stuff, um, some other things that probably I shouldn't even be talking about here in, in, <laughs> in, my, in my experience. But, um, you know, when, when you strip all that away and you really just sit down and all that's left is you and you start thinking about the basics of life and what are the what, what's what's so beautiful about this? Like when you can ask yourself, because I mean, I'll be real with you, man. Like when when I was probably, I don't know, 15 to 25 if you told me, hey, dude, why don't you just be happy? I would, I mean, I would grit my teeth and cringe at the word happy. Like, that doesn't exist. Like, this is not Mr. Rogers. Like, that doesn't exist. I mean, I was a vengeful, hateful, evil, disgusting monster running the streets every day of my life. And then I quickly realized once I had, once I got in trouble and I ended up going to jail, I realized that this is not right. This is not the life for me. And most people are like, well, no shit, JC. But the thing about it is, is it was my environment. I'm not going to get into that, but it's the way that I grew up and what I was surrounded around, what I believed. And my belief system was based off of where I came from. And for me to be in this place where, dude, like, I, like you couldn't even talk to me about personal development. I would probably fight you. Like, I, I mean, I'm just being real. Like, I would probably go for your throat and try and take you out because that's how I felt about like good people. Like when I seen people who had money and I, I was like, man, they're just snooty, man. They're like, they're different. They're weird. They're like, man. And, and, it's, and at the same time, when they walk in a the room, they have a presence. Like I, I couldn't figure it out, but I came to a point, man, where I decided that I'm not going to live this life anymore and I'm going to make it better no matter what. And when I did, it wasn't easy, guys. Like, I mean, like you're gonna you're gonna deal with things that are right here, man. It's you, man. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's back and forth. It's use my logic, use my heart, use my logic, use my heart. And then I went from this this dude that was always fighting and always getting in trouble and always in ruckus to being really soft. And then I I got to the point where, man, like. How, what's my posture look like and how am I talking and what am I wearing? Like I got in this, I got into this phase of awareness that was just completely unreal. And then I started to realize like, all right, now I'm just trying to be like these people. Like, who am I? And then I started getting back to myself because I went from this hardcore dude to this really soft dude that was lost. And so for you guys, you can do this, but it's going to take everything you've got to get yourself started. It's going to take Man, dude, you might have to go home and cry tonight. I mean, I'm just being real. Like, it's going to take everything you got to face yourself and who you really are and where you want to go. And you can get started without a coach. But I highly, I highly suggest, I don't even give a shit if it's me. Go find somebody that will be your ride or die. Find somebody that has achieved what you want to achieve. Find somebody that can help you in your area of life. You can have a, a mindset coach. You can have a fitness coach. You can have a business coach. You can have a sales coach. You can have a marketing coach. Shit, man, if you get your, if you get your money right, you can surround yourself with nothing but coaches where everybody's there and everybody's watching. It's, it's like being in public. Like I'm in a room, everybody's staring at me, and they're all doing this, waiting for me to make a move. And all of them have taught you something different. 
All of them have given you information of what can make you successful. And at the same time, you have to remember who the fuck you are before you can even take this journey. Because if, if you don't know who you are and what you want out of life, you're popped. So if you're just getting into personal development, if you, and I'm, I'm not trying to go on a rant here, but it, it's, this is what needs to be. Like success isn't, you ain't going to go find just a six week program and your fucking life's all better, guys. Like, it, don't, don't look for all these shortcuts and little shit that you hear from all these people, like four hour work weeks and everything else. This takes time. This takes perseverance. This takes persistence, resilience. This takes getting your ass kicked every day and figuring out who you are and what you want and start that journey, no matter how hard it is, no matter how bad your voice squeaks when you speak the truth, say it, say it. I don't care how bad you tremble. I don't care if a tear comes out of your eye. You got to get on that journey. And when you do, the first thing you should be looking for is where can I go get money? How can I make money? Because you need to put money away to find people that can coach you into what you want out of life and get you where you need to be. It's, it's, they got this saying that it's lonely at the top, man. It's, it's only lonely if you're by yourself on the way there when you get there, if you can get there by yourself. But you surround yourself with the right people, shit, you're going to have one hell of a party when you get up there. You know what I mean? So let's get it. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> And what, how do you energize others like this? How do you transfer your energy? Because just talking to you, I mean, normally when I do a podcast or interview somebody, I, I just kind of sit here, wait for them to answer. But listening to you, talk to you, I'm just like, yes, let's go. I'm just ready, man. <laughs> and uh, trying to semi-contain it in, within, the, within the vehicle. Uh, but So how do you energize others to – to do it without making yourself a crutch for them to play the blame game with you if they're not successful. So this, this was a, a hard dude. I, I'll, I'll say this. This was top three hardest lessons I had to learn. And I'll be honest, like I'm, I'm still, I'm still learning it. So I figured something out, man. Like, even though that, we as human beings, as people, how awesome we are and like how important we are, how much we can influence people, how much we can love and be compassionate. Like the, the, all this amazing stuff is so great, but I just can't fucking save everybody, man. Like, it, like people have to get to a point where they've made the decision that they want to do something great with themselves before I can work with them. And then from that point on, I can easily – um, teach them and influence them and show them and share my energy because until you have an interest, until I have your complete fucking attention, um, that doesn't matter, you know? And that was why I shied away from doing like motivational videos. Like I used to do them in the beginning. I thought they were cool. And I realized that, dude, it's just getting, it's getting all the, the, the weakest people together and getting them happy and excited for the day and then sending them off to go get punched in the face. Because you can get as excited as you want about ex, ex, external motivation, but once you get in the marketplace, you're going to get punched in the face, and then you're like, oh, let me, where's JC Limulus' video? I got to get excited again. Where's Les Brown and Grant Cardone? Where's these guys at? Let me get excited for the day. And you're wasting time. You know, so like it just comes to a point where people have to be to a certain point in their life and know what they want, and then I can help them. And then it's, it's not that I have to give my energy. It's just, you know, it's, it's the, um, the cool and awesome part of human interaction where I can get excited about an idea. You can get excited about it and we feed off each other's energy and we blow up. I'm very energy driven. So if you bring some bullshit around me, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it right back at you. You bring some awesome smiles and interest and ambition around me. Like I'm going to make you sky high. You know what I mean? So I, I, I hope that answers your question, man, but um, you just got to find people that want it. I mean, that's it. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And I came to that realization with the find your value statement that you had us do and you had us write out uh, me at least three or four times because the first few weren't good enough. <laughs> and But that was, I sat down and wrote that out, went over, showed my wife, and she's like, she's like, I had no idea. And we just had never really had that talk. And it hasn't been until the last few months with having you as 
as a coach and as a mentor that her and I have really sat down and we we are closer than we have been in a long time. That's and good. I know somebody is going to see this and tag her. So I'll have some explaining <laughs> to do later, <laughs> but I, I love it. And she loves it. And good. it just, I mean, it's just lit in a fire under us and has just completely motivated us. Uh, so with, with that, I mean, what, what are your goals for 2018? I mean, they can't be, I don't imagine they're small goals knowing you because I know you're not a small minded person. Yeah, man. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you some of the goals. I'm going to give you some of them. Some of them <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't even hand out. So here, here's one really awesome. Fair goal. enough. And if you are, if you're in the Chicagoland area, um, you might want to take up, take me up on this if, if it works out. So one of my goals is uh, I'm going to go ahead and get an office here in Chicago and I'm going to hire three to four people to come work with me for Limitless. Um, it'll be all based upon content creation, um, like videography, photography, um, working with me for sales and marketing and social media. So my goal is to, is to get that office up and running. And I mean, it's going to be like 7 a.m. till 7 p.m., seven days a week, going hard, working over there and reaching as many freaking people as I can because everything I've done so far, I've been on social media about two years. All my social media platforms combined, I think I've got about 50,000 followers. Um, I did that not knowing what was going on or how it works or I did it by myself. Um, and I really want to, my, my big goal about putting that together is to build the Limitless Nation. So my, I, I would like to see the Limitless Nation go from 50,000 to about 250, 300,000 minimum by the end of 2018. So I just want to build a community and that's got nothing to do with, um, I'm trying to sell people shit or none of that. Like I just want to find people who are entrepreneurs that are single moms and single dads and couples and um, people who are, are just getting into personal development. Like I want to find people that want to make this world a better fucking place. And we can all be in the same house together. We can all be there. And like, and I, and, and I don't have the idea of what most people do about, about communities. So I don't have the idea of, Oh, I've got 300,000 people that are in my, in my community and 20 people are active in there. You know, like, I, I, I want to see, I want to break the internet. I want to see people completely dedicated and interested in not only helping themselves, but other people around them. So that I think is, is my biggest goal. Like all next year, I have tons of personal desires and goals that I have, but I mean, above all, this means everything to me. I, I don't, I don't have a job. I haven't had a job in years. Like I don't, I don't do the, the job thing and limitless literally like the moment I wake up till I go to sleep. And then even when I'm fucking sleeping, like I'm thinking about limitless, like how can I help more people? How can I reach more people? What is working? What's not working? Like, I don't understand social media. So I have to sit and look at things. And, and then I'm like, you know what? Just make the content, put it out. Like, so like my big thing is, is like get people around me to help me get that message out and build that community. That is a hundred percent real. I, I mean, that's inspiring. That's motivating. I don't know that it gets more real than that right there, man. Well, I mean, I mean, right now, like we've got people everywhere, dude. I've got people in New Zealand, Australia. Um, I think I have people in Russia. I've got people in Canada, South America, Spain, Italy, the UK, like limitless is everywhere. But because I, I, I don't understand like so, social media and the process of all this. I mean, dude, I used to build houses. Like I, I've been on social media for two years. Like I, I don't, you know what I mean? I show up and I get it done and I get your results. You know what I mean? But I need to pull everybody back together. And then I need to blow that community up, man. Like the more people that you're surrounded around that are on the same mission as you, the, the bigger that ball of energy. Like look at the energy between me and you, two people right now. Could you imagine <laughs> 300,000 people 
having these types of conversations every day, bringing new ideas, new ways. Hey, guys, like, I know that there's a group of maybe single moms in here that are having a hard time making money. But these 30 entrepreneurs over here that's already built six-figure businesses can say, hey, look, we've got opportunity for you to build your own business. Or if you don't want to own a business, fine, you can come work with us and we can pay you. And you can stay home and make money. Like, dude, like this is, people don't understand the power of thoughts and ideas and turning them into reality. And then when you combine that with two, three, 400,000 people that are dedicated to helping each other, <laughs> like li uh, limitless people yeah. go around the globe, period. 100% believe it. And I can't wait for it. What book are you reading right now? So the newest book I got, and I've, I've read this a few times, and I highly advise everybody go get this, is Steal Like an Artist. And I know it sounds crazy, but this book is really great, man. This book has some amazing, amazing insight on the idea of, of, of content and how to create your own content, you know, because, I mean, at the end of the day, without reading the book, I mean, all we have is the information that's been handed down probably for the last 3,000 years. And everybody's got their own way of putting it out. And then other people come along and like for me, for instance, like check this out. So with, with that being said, like this is about steal like an artist. And this is about like using other people's information and letting you know that it's okay. But the thing about it is, is there's, a, there's an art to doing it. There's a way to do it where it's your information. It's your idea your perception of it so like for me i don't follow tony robbins i don't i even spoke on stage with les brown i don't follow les brown i don't follow any i follow a few people i follow grant cardone patrick bet david and recently uh gary v that that's the only three people i follow because they're like they're not in my niche like i, I don't want to be regurgitating les brown or tony robbins like we got enough fucking motivational people out here like i want to bring limitless to the table i want to bring me to the table and i want to bring my own content but at the same time like like i said the content's been the same for three thousand years it's just the way you put it out and this this book uh one it gives you permission to go out and, and and show you how to do it the right way and two um it relieves your mind of constant constantly being um worried that you're going to be using somebody else's content like i don't I, and, and i'm not saying like purposely like hey i'm just gonna copy and paste this dude's shit and put it on my page <laughs> like the ideas the perceptions the concepts like use them you know what i mean absolutely going back to what you mentioned with people fresh fresh into the personal development area what are five books or five people that they could read or people they could watch that will help get their mind right faster before they narrow down finding a coach if it's not you okay so first just start following everything i've got <laughs> so um i mean first and foremost i mean i, I i'm not i'm not i'm not like trying to promote myself i'm just being real like i know what i have i know what i put together i know what my content can do for you and how i can help you and i mean like you can just follow my pages you can just follow my live streams you can follow my videos all my social media whatever like i mean follow me come friend me follow me turn on notifications i'll be there in your ear all day ragging at you to keep it moving all right so that's the big thing but um so i would say if there's five people to follow um i would say myself I would say Patrick Bet David. I would say Grant Cardone. I would say Gary V. And like I said, man, like I don't follow many people. Like, um, oh, Sean Whalen, the another dude I've been following. Actually, where I found this book and one of his videos, Sean Whalen. That dude, he's a cool ass dude, man. So if you guys ain't following Sean Whalen, follow him. It's S E A N. W H A L E N, Sean Whalen, awesome dude, great guy, straight up front, uh, no BS, and he'll give it to you like it is, man. So those are my people I would say to, to follow if you wanted to learn about mindset or or life in general. Because like Grant does sales, um, 
Patrick Bat David does entrepreneurship. Gary V does marketing. You guys see the pattern here. Um, myself with mindset, and then you've got um, Sean Whalen over there, which is he dude. He's an entre he's a serial entrepreneur. He's a he's a go getter. Like he built a Baja truck and started racing Bajas. He ran for Congress. <laughs> the dude ran for Congress with a big old beard and and his uh and his flannel shirt on. Like the dude is a monster. Like. I've got the utmost respect for that guy. So, I mean, that, I would say that would be the people I would say to go follow. That's awesome. I I love it. Uh, I don't I don't know what what else to to ask, man. I mean, I keep trying to throw stuff at you. And so look, so look, you, so look. Let me let me turn the you, table around. You keep keep coming up with it. <laughs> so, give me give me give me a good one. So, in detail, what are the three? Cause you've only like we've only been in the boot camp uh, just under two months. It's a six month program, yep. and I really want to hear, without any trying to make it sound good, I want a real fucking answer from you, and I'm gonna hold the strike over your head because I know I can see in your face <laughs> when you're lying. What are the three biggest things that the boot camp has helped you with, for real? For real, 100%, no bullshit, no excuses. Um, number one is going to be confidence. I mean, the difference before uh, versus where I'm, where I'm at now, it's, it's night, night and day difference. Uh, the awareness before I was wasting time, just pissing away time, making excuses of I, I don't have the time. I can't do this. I, don't, I can't fit it in. And after you, you had me delete some stupid games off my phone, which hurt for a little bit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, I, they were great time wasters, great distractions to keep me from what I was supposed to be doing and should have been doing. Um, but th I've been more, more productive and I, I posted more pictures. I've done more videos. I've gone out and talked to more people. Um, like I said, just this week alone, I got asked to leave three businesses, uh, from, soli from soliciting. So, I mean, that, that's been huge. What about, uh, what, what about at home? At home with that creating time, my, my wife and I are closer now than we, than we really have been in, in a long time. I have more time for her. I have more time for the kids, uh, I don't even know what to say about it because I either get up earlier or I spend my time with them and stay up, stay up later because I can do, I can do that. I now know it's okay to do that. I'm aware uh, that I can do that. And, but I, since I'm at home, I'm present with them. I'm not thinking about work. I'm not thinking about social media. I'm not thinking <coughs> about what I need to get done for the, the boot camp or something else because I've either already got it done or going to do it after my time with them. So <laughs> that right there, I mean, that's been, that's worth more than I paid for the boot camp, man. I'll be straight up with you. <laughs> awesome, man. Good. Well, um, I think that's it. I just, I just want to know what, what your honest opinion was about about the boot camp because I'm gonna release another boot camp and do the same thing again. Um, it's gonna be you, you guys are the Red Alpha team, um, which are the Limitless Legends. Who whoever makes it through the boot camp will be a Limitless Legend, and then I'm gonna do the Blue Alpha team next. So and then you guys will be in competition with each other. So I'm gonna get ready. If there's anybody maybe interested in the boot camp, if you guys are watching this, um, I'm gonna release that probably here really soon. I'm gonna show you something else. Let's see if this works. On what I've been working on over here. So I'm going to have some free training. The Limitless Institute is being revamped. We're completely rebuilding the whole site. Wow. That looks, that looks awesome, awesome, man. And get, getting ready for that. Um, so... If you guys are interested in the boot camp itself, go Red Alpha Team. I see you, Kelly. 
<laughs> so if you're interested in the boot camp, I'm going to release that. The boot camp is six months. The boot camp in total is going to be $2,997. Uh, and you can make monthly payments of $4.99 to the boot camp. I'm only accepting 10 people, and you do need to be interviewed for it to see if you even qualify to be in the boot camp. Also, right now, for the Limitless Institute, for a very short amount of time, I'm going to release the Institute for $397 for a lifetime membership. And if you join the boot camp, the new boot camp that I'm putting out, you will get the Limitless Institute free. Um, that's a $4,997 program, lifetime program, for free. It's a lifetime membership that you'll get with the boot camp. <laughs> yes. Damn. I've got tons of webinars coming up, tons of free training coming up. I've been I've been hustling on the back end over here. The the Limitless Institute was in dire need of a of a, of a facelift and, <laughs> and and content added. So that's all being done right now. So it's all coming together, guys. So um, if there's anything you're interested in, if you guys got questions, just feel free to hit me up. That's, that's awesome, awesome, man. man. Uh, uh, and now Anna's saying I got an echo. I don't, I don't know what it did. did. It's probably from when I um, switched the camera around. Probably threw something off. So, all right, man. Well, that, that's, 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 that's all, all I got, got man. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's going to be episode, episode 33 for me. Boom. Let's kill it, man. Two, hey, 2018 is coming, man. If you didn't, if you didn't start working on 2018, you're popped. Like, let's get this thing started. Let me, let me help you out. So, um, get ready for 2018. We've been working on 2018 since uh, November 1st in Red Alpha Team. Get it together. Get ready, man. Forget about the New Year's. Hey, yes. Forget about the New Year's resolutions. Start making some goals, man. Fuck them resolutions. That, like, how them last year resolutions work out, or the year before, or the year before that. Forget about that, man. Make some goals. Make a decision. Decide what you're gonna do. And stop it. Nothing to go get it. Go get it by any means necessary. I love, I love it. it. Cool, brother. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the uh, the opportunity to be interviewed by you, man. Absolutely, man. I thank, I thank you for sitting, sitting down with me. me. I, I may have to turn this into two episodes, episodes just, just to, to kick, kick off, off the new year right. right. Whatever you, whatever you got to do, Buckwheat, whatever you got to do. <laughs> All, All right, right, man. I'll, I'll let, let you get out of here and get, get back, back to it. it. Go, cool, man. You guys have yourself a limitless day. We can't be stopped. We won't be stopped. We're the one percenters. We are limitless. The only limitations we have are the limitations in our own mind. I'm JC, man. Psst. I'm out.